everyone. What's up? My name is Mike Nylander, and you have just found your way to another fun-filled episode of Man Bag Mike. The channel devoted not just to one, but to two different things that I like. Handbags and talking. So hit that like button and be sure to subscribe as I take a look at the latest handbags from various designers such as Louis Vuitton, Prada, Coach, Michael Kors, Dooney and & Burke, and many more. I will give you my opinion as to what's hot and uh, what's not. Each new episode will center around a different bag, and each bag will be thoroughly and wittingly reviewed by yours truly using a list of various categories and a five-star rating system. For this episode of Man Bag Mike, I chose a bag that met the needs of a viewer of my channel. On my previous video, I received a comment from Worlds of Curls asking me if the bag chosen, the Elaine from Brahmin, was a bag big enough to hold the laptop computer. And while I had to say that it was not, this led me to realize that a laptop is something that we all have. You know, it kind of took me a while there. and that it is something that we all carry around with us, if not daily, then at least from time to time. So, I decided that I was going to look for a bag that could hold the laptop, while not necessarily looking like a basic laptop bag. And I wanted it to be at a price point that was easily accessible to everyone. So I searched a few different websites before coming to a final choice for today's review. And I would now like to take the time to introduce you all to the bag that we will be looking at. This bag is the Michael Kors Ray Large Quilted Metallic Cotton Blend Tote Bag. Wow! Try saying that one five times fast there, kiddos. It's quite a mouthful. With the formalities and the introductions out of the way, and with knowing that this bag is one that is big enough to hold the laptop, we still have some questions that need answers. After all, we still have to go through all of those nifty little different categories and deliver a fair amount of sass. So, I invite you to relax on that nice, comfy sofa of yours as we take a look at the next bag for review on Man Bag Mike. If you have been watching these videos, and you know, thank you if you have been, then you will, by now, know the drill. But if you're new to this channel, let me start by saying a friendly and happy welcome. And now, allow me the chance to lay the whole grading process out for you. In order to give a complete review of each bag that will be listed on this channel, a list of different categories has been created, which will highlight the different important key elements of what I am looking for in each bag. These categories will be the same for each bag that I look at, and they will be graded based off of a five-star rating where I, you know, try to, rate based off of what I feel others would look at and want, and not just my own personal wants and desires in a bag. At the end of each video, I will give you my thoughts on the bag and how I personally feel about it. And I will give you my take on whether or not the bag is fab or drab. So the categories that we're gonna look at are as follows. Style, price and value, versatility, practicality, and timelessness. 
The first category that we're going to look at is the category of style. When I chose to review this bag, I did so because it was different from so many of the other totes that are available. And while I will, you know, at least try to refrain from spilling the beans on how I feel about this bag personally, I will say that I was intrigued. You know, a word that here can have either positive or negative connotations by the look of this bag. The color of this bag and the cotton polyurethane blend of the material have created a bag that is metallic in nature and has a very unique and nice shine to it that will instantly draw attention. But the eye grabbing does not stop there, boys and girls. No way because this bag is one that is definitely going to grab some attention. And it has some pizzazz, though maybe not in your typical way. It also manages to have this utilitarian edginess to it, thanks to the bungee drawstring that it has. This makes the bag stand out in a whole new and different kind of way. The bag does boast a rather large MK monogram surrounded by a circle, but this is the only logo on the exterior. So, even though the initials are large, they are not splashed across the entire bag, which some people will love and appreciate. Furthermore, the quilting of this bag in horizontal rows adds a type of style to the bag while also serving to add just a little bit of extra strength to the bag itself. The bag has handles that are made out of the same type of fabric as the rest of the bag. It also has gold-toned hardware which perfectly complements the rose gold fabric. And it has a crossbody strap in a beige tone that, you know, while matching the bag, does seem a little bit off-putting in that it is not an exact color match. And honestly, I just can't help but think that they could have done a little bit better job at matching the color of the strap to that of the bag. However, all in all, this bag is you know, it's a fun bag. It has a good color to it, and it plays with the idea of quilting, but in a way that is far from your average quilted bag. So, three and a half stars here, because I can see this bag appealing to some people, perhaps a little more than not, you know, at least at first. But I will say that this is most definitely a bag that is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So the second category that we will look at today is the category of price and value. And I will say that I gave a three and a half star rating here. Honestly, were the price of this bag any higher, then this rating would have been considerably lower. But considering the low price point of this bag, I can say that it may almost be okay that this bag is a polyurethane cotton blend. You know, I'm just going to say it. This is not a high-end fabric. The price point of this bag, at least at the time of this review, is $119 on the Michael Kors website. So, it is definitely a bag that all can take advantage of, and I can appreciate that. It is definitely a good price point there, and again, this is the only reason why I'm not creating some big o stink over the fact that this bag is neither leather, nor canvas, or, you know, hell, even nylon. So, 
Let's now look at some of the positive sides to this bag before we switch over and look at the negatives. This bag, as I already said in the style category, does have some nice gold-toned hardware to it, which I appreciate. And it has a bungee drawstring to cinch the bag. I'm quite honestly not sure that I would ever need to do that, but it's there nonetheless. And the quilting of this bag is something that I like. I will say the quilting is probably one of the nicest aspects to this bag. Also, again, there is the very good price point here. $119 for a bag this size is a good value. Now, there is the interior that is 100% polyester, and I don't like that. And once again, we are dealing with the fact that the exterior of this bag is a cotton polyurethane blend. Ugh. Just the fabrics of this bag are just, they're not that luxe. They're not a good quality fabric. They're just, they're not. I'm going to be honest. They're not all that. But, you know, again, one has to look at the price point and say that you're kind of getting what you pay for here. If it was any higher, I would definitely say these fabrics are just not worth it. But for that price point, you know, I can kind of justify it. Now, I am also going to look at the fact that I just cannot seem to overlook two other things that could have been done to this bag that neither one of them were. The bottom of the bag is what I'm looking at here, and I'm just very upset that the bottom of this bag offers no sort of protection at all. There is nothing that will keep this bag from getting damaged. There are no feet on this bag to keep it from actually getting damaged on the ground, and you know, there's no leather padding on the bottom at all either, which would also be a nice way to protect it. Instead, the bottom of this bag is simply the same old cotton polyurethane quilted material as the rest of the bag. And considering that most people who do get bags put them down on surfaces, I just see this bag getting messed up at the bottom very, very quickly. For that reason, I kind of feel that they missed a big boat here and they missed a big opportunity to enhance the quality of this bag. I just, when it comes to this type of bag, I think a leather padding or the feet are needed and neither one of them are present. So the third category that we are going to look at is the category of versatility. When it comes to the versatility of this bag, let's just start by saying that there is absolutely no way in hell that this bag has a formal look to it at all. It is just not going to go in any type of formal event. There is just no freaking way that's ever going to happen. To even try to pretend that this bag has a single hint of formality to it would be in entirely ridiculous. So, considering that this bag doesn't get any marks for formal, why did it get a three-star rating? Well, let's find out. Despite having no ability to be a formal bag, this bag does actually have a lot of versatility to it in other ways. It could easily be a day bag or one used for work. It can be, as mentioned earlier, used to store a laptop, which makes it very handy in that way as well. Or it could be used to pack up clothing or necessities for a weekend getaway. For the price point here, we are seeing a bag that has a lot of different options to it. I would consider that this bag at the price point that it's offered at could actually even be a really good school bag. 
I mean, it's big enough to hold your school books and other necessities, so, you know, there's another option for it. In the end, like I said, this bag has no place in a formal setting, but it does offer a ton of other ways that it can be used. And, as such, it is actually a very versatile bag once you stop and consider all of the different ways in which it can be used. The fourth category we're looking at today is the category of practicality. When it comes to the practicality of this bag, I gave a five-star rating. Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> I will say that I gave this rating because this is a bag that does offer a lot of space to store your items. And it does have a good amount of pockets as well. So these are both things that I personally just am all about. Let's go ahead and look at the specifics of this bag now to find out exactly what I mean. The measurements of this bag, you know, get ready for them, are 21.5 inches wide by 14 inches high by 8 inches deep. So it is a big bag. And let's face it, bigger is better. Always. <laughs> the bag has five pockets as well. It has four inside, two at the front and two at the back. And these are going to be your just standard slide pockets, which are fine because they're inside. You also have the pocket on the front of the bag, which is a zip pocket as well. And I like that being there. Again, you have the bungee. Now, this for me, once again, is a piece that would be mainly visual, but I can see the use for certain people. So I had to add it into the practicality section here. This bag, being a basic tote design, is one that allows for easy access to both put items into the bag and to locate those items and retrieve them. So once again, that's a good thing. It is a bag that has a decent amount of space and a good number of pockets. So, it scores five stars here because it is offering a practicality that I look for when reviewing bags. The fifth and final category that we're looking at is the category of timelessness. When it comes to this category, I gave a two-star rating. Let's find out why. I do feel like this bag is one that just will not stand the test of time, I'm sad to say. I feel like while it may be nice now, and while it may be a bag that you're initially drawn to purchasing because it is cute looking, it is a bag that will actually stylistically date itself rather quickly. I just don't see this color and the way that this bag is quilted and all of the components, I don't see them holding on stylistically for very long. In the end, I can see one using this bag in the long term more out of a necessity because of the size of the bag and the fact that it does hold a lot of items rather than out of stylistic value. And that is another reason why it got rated so low here. More so, and I know that this goes back to the quality of the bag mentioned in price and value, but I'm going to mention it again here. I do feel like this is a bag that will become rather worn looking very quickly. Even if you do take good care of it, it's only a matter of time. I just don't see there really being any way that somebody can keep this bag looking good for a prolonged period of time, especially considering there's no leather pad on the bottom, no feet on the bottom. I do see the bottom especially getting very dirty, very just gross looking, and something that you're not going to be able to clean. So there's that as well. 
it is with these things in my mind that I had to give it the rating of two stars simply because I do not see the style being one that will keep and I do see the quality of the bag actually setting it up to get dirty very quickly which means that you're not going to want to use it for too long because after it gets dirty it's just going to lose whatever looks it had. We have drawn near to the end of another review, and another bag has been rated based off of my own personal standards. Lastly, it is time to share my feelings on this bag. And I will admit that for me personally, I find that I am, or should I say I was, initially very drawn to this bag. I actually liked the idea of this bag. I liked the rose gold. I liked the size and the shape of it. I liked the quilting. I thought it was a very nice bag when I initially looked at it. But the more that I had a chance to look at this bag while doing this review, the more that I came to see that what I liked about it was just surface value. So when looking at this bag, I will say that it was merely a bag infatuation and not true bag love at all. This bag may present itself at first as perfect, but after a short-lived, albeit blissful relationship, I am sure that even I would want to kick it to the curb. In the end, at least I can say that I would have learned a lesson. This bag would show me what to avoid and what not to look for when selecting my next bag match. So, is this bag bad or drab? This is the first time that I am going to say that I am completely unable to fully identify this bag as being fab or drab. Rather, it is just meh. Nah. It has a beauty to it that will hook one into making the purchase for sure. And if I'm being honest, it is a nice enough bag. But it is not a long-term bag. At the same time, it is not a terrible bag by any means. It is not a bag that I would call ugly. So it is a bag that rests in limbo for me, somewhere between the bliss of fab and the hellfire of drab. I don't know where to put it. Maybe you will, but me, I'm at a loss here. And with that said, we have now reached the end of another review. I hope you all had a fun time looking at the Michael Kors Ray Large Quilted Metallic Cotton Blend Tote with me. Again, I'm just going to say that is a mouthful of a title for this bag. If so, please let me know by showing me some love and hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And be sure to stay tuned as a new review will be coming your way soon. Until next time, I'm Manbag Mike saying later.